Good evening. Welcome to our Sunday evening worship service. We will sing a few songs together, have a couple of prayers, and I will deliver a lesson to you. And so, without further ado, if you will turn your songbooks to number 578, 578, Ready? We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings, Hallelujah to the Lamb, Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Stay at that opening, and we will sing song number 579. 579. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Turn your books to number 183. 183. Ready? Lord of all being, throned afar. Thy glory flames from sun and star, center and soul of every sphere, yet to each loving heart how near. Son of our life, thy quickening ray sheds on our path the glow of day. Star of our hope, thy sovereign light cheers the long watches of the night. Our midnight is thy smile withdrawn. Our noon tide is thy gracious dawn. Our rainbow arch thy mercy sign. All save the clouds of sin are thine. Before we pray together, let's turn to number 726. 726. Lord, 
Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we can gather together, howbeit in a virtual fashion through YouTube, uh, that we can uh, lift our voices in song and uh, that we can pray to you and that we can uh, just uh, break your word down a little bit, uh, that uh, a lesson might be delivered that might touch our hearts and provoke us to think a little bit and study a little bit more and read our Bibles just a little bit more. I pray to Heavenly Father that you would be with us and that you would uh, give us the peace that passes understanding that only comes from you. We thank you so much for being our God, for sending Jesus to us, for the sacrifice that he made that uh, we might have forgiveness of sins and that we might have an intercessor between us and you. Bless us as we go through the rest of this service. Be with us and guide us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Amen. This evening, uh, the subject of my lesson is called Steps to departure. Uh, back when I was uh, teaching school, uh, I had uh, three girls in one of my classes. I'll never forget them. Their names were Benita, Belita, and Vanessa. They were full of the dickens. I called them my killer bees. Well, this evening, we are going to have uh, what I am going to call uh, my killer D's. The steps to departure, and each one of them will begin with the letter D. Perhaps one of the saddest experiences that people face today is that when people that they care about and people that they love depart from them, they go their separate ways and uh, they fall away from the Lord. And uh, it, makes us, it makes us so sad when he or she departs from the faith. And so uh, we want to just share with you, I want to share with you uh, one of the reasons why the book of Hebrews was written. The book of Hebrews, part of it at least, deals almost specifically with people falling away. And so uh, let's start in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1, where it says, For this reason, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away from, up, from it. Our first D is drift. Back in my days when I clammed, and I still do from time to time, and very, very early in my clamming career, it was a job that I did in the summers between uh, my school teaching, I was out in the bay and my father was in uh, the boat with me. And I was climbing in very deep water up to here, and I was just rumbling away, catching clams, and not paying much attention to the boat. And uh, pretty soon I realized that the boat was further away from me than it was supposed to be. As a matter of fact, it continued to get further away from me. I shouted real, real loudly to my father, who didn't know how to run the boat. Uh, and he started playing with the anchor and trying to get it to grab, uh, which he wasn't able to do. So here I was, half running in water chest deep, half swimming, to get back to my dad and get back to the boat that had drifted away from me. Most Christians do not get up in the morning and say, I'm leaving Christ. Most of the time, it's a gradual thing. It starts small. It starts by perhaps 
skipping a Bible class or skipping a worship service. It may uh, go down to, uh, it may evolve into hanging around with people that we shouldn't hang around with, that we stopped hanging around with when we became Christians. And just as boats that are left without an anchor or without an anchor that grabs on to the bottom, um, after a while, uh, people will gradually drift away from the Lord. It's a sad, sad thing because it happens rather slowly. And sometimes as members, we, we don't even realize it. And pretty soon people have, have drifted to the point that they are no longer with us. And so step one in departing from the Lord is drifting from the word of God. And by the way, I, I perhaps uh, uh, forgot to mention uh, maybe part of that drifting is drifting away from daily reading and meditating on the Lord's word. The second D that we'll deal with is doubting the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The fathers tried me by testing me. If you're a parent, did your children ever test you? Did they test their parents' authority? Somewhere at the age 12, 13, or 14, uh, when the, uh, those hormones start to kick in, uh, that becomes a, a problem sometime in raising children. And so it was with Israel. Uh, the book of Hebrews was written to Jewish Christians. Um, when the children of Israel uh, had escaped from Egypt after having been in bondage, having been there for 400 years, they escaped and through the miracle of crossing the Red Sea, uh, they were wandering through the wilderness and they doubted that God would feed them. Yet manna and quail was provided for them. They doubted if they could get water. And on two separate occasions, water literally came out of the rock. They were told in, in chapter 17 uh, of, of Exodus, in chapter 20 of the book of Numbers, that God would uh, take them to a promised land. And they still didn't believe they had to send spies into that land to see what the land was about. And unfortunately, uh, most of the spies said, we can't take it. Christians sometimes have the same problem today. They doubt that God can take care of us. They, they forget Matthew 6, that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and all those things will be added to us. And sometimes, sometimes they uh, doubt how they were supposed to worship. The next thing you know, a, a particular group of Christians has a five-piece band as part of their worship. Uh, they have a wedding ceremony on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday and decide to have communion, even though Acts chapter 20, verse 7 says on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. And so in the context there, in Hebrews uh, chapter 7, uh, and through 4 and 13, it says, But encourage one another uh, day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That doubt that might come into your minds. That was Israel's problem. And that can be uh, a problem today with people departing from the church. That is, they harden their heart against the way God has instructed them to worship, and they drift away. Step three is dullness of hearing the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, he says, the Hebrew writer says very succinctly, 
He says, you have become dull of hearing. When I was about four or five years old, uh, uh, my mother uh, got very, very worried about me. I wasn't responding to her when she would talk to me. And she was extremely worried that something was happening to my ears, that I was going deaf. She grabbed me up, threw me in the back seat of the car, and took me to the doctor. And so the doctor put that little light thing that they put in your ear. They had them back then when I was four or five years old. And the next thing you know, there was a chuckle. He got a pair of tongs and uh, started probing gently into my ears. And out came pieces of wadded up newspaper. <laughs> I guess, I, you know, I had a hole here somewhere. So as a little guy, I decided you're supposed to fill the hole up with something. And I decided to fill it up with newspaper. Well, the first symptom of what I had done was that I had become dull of hearing. Now, even today, my hearing is pretty good. And so when the Hebrew writer says that people became dull of hearing, I think he's assuming that at one time or another, their hearing was very, very sharp. And what had happened to it is it had become dull. They had hardened their hearts to the point that they doubted what God said so many times. They became dull of hearing. Um, do you sharpen knives in your house? I went online and found this miracle sharpener, and it, it's pretty good. I like sharp knives. Um, uh, we have knives for different purposes in our homes. We have knives for uh, dicing. We have knives for cutting bread. Uh, we have uh, knives uh, for doing uh, many, many, many things. Uh, as a fisherman, I have a couple of special, special knives that are ultra sharp that I use to fillet fish. And so we keep our knives sharp. It actually used to be a profession in the old days. In the old days, there were people that went from house to house with knife sharpeners that would sharpen people's knives for them. You know, the word is the spiritual sword of God. How long has it been since you've sharpened your spiritual sword? This is done by daily reading and daily meditation of the Lord's word. We can't help but refer back to the first psalm where uh, we, we were told that, that this, uh, this writer of this psalm said that he delighted in the law of the Lord and he meditated on it day and night. How long has it been since we sharpened our spiritual sword? Is your Bible uh, worn out from use, or is it covered with dust from lack of use? What happened that, uh, that we have gone to the point where we doubt the word, to the point where we avoid the word? When this happened, we've just taken the final step to departure. Now let's review those steps real quickly. First, there's the drifting, that, that gradual moving away from the Lord. And again, it, it's like an anchor that, that just doesn't hold. And the boat starts to drift from where it's supposed to be. It happens slowly when people miss a, a service or people uh, don't attend various activities. And then from there, it, it goes to doubting the word of God. The fathers tested me like, like children test you. I know that as a school teacher, uh, my students tested me. They wanted to see what I was made of. They wanted to see that uh, discipline was meted out fairly. And they would test you to see how far they could push you. And to the children of Israel, they, they 
tested God to the point that they didn't believe God could meet their needs. And so here we are today in, uh, in 2020, and we have those same doubts sometimes. We have those same doubts that uh, by seeking first the kingdom of heaven, that God will supply all of our needs. And Christians' doubt leads them to think that, that perhaps they can worship him any old way that they want to. You know, as long as I'm worshiping, what does it matter uh, if I stay true to the form that the Bible tells me to stay true to? And then finally, there's the dullness of hearing, that sometimes our ears get dull to the teaching to the point that our, our hearts get hardened. And because of that, our spiritual swords become dull. This leads to step four. I told you they were my killer D's. There was the drifting, the doubting, the dullness, and all of that leads to the fourth D, and that fourth D is departure from God. It's that sad, sad state where people that we cared about through drifting and doubting and becoming dull to the word of God have departed from the Lord's congregation. They, they, their spiritual life has departed. They, they no longer read their Bibles. They no longer pray. And this person stops attending the assemblies. And so this one has, climb, have, has climbed through the four steps of departure from God. And why is this so dangerous? And why did all of my scriptures come from the book of Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 6, is a scary verse. In essence, I think what it says, and the words is, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. I think what has, has happened to these people is they've slowly drifted away. And through their doubt, they've become dull of hearing. And they had it all. They were baptized for the remission of their sins. They received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They had a supporting congregation that was willing to encourage them. Yet, they departed. They departed from the congregation of God's believers. And the Hebrew writer says, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. And so I want us to ask ourselves a very, very important question. When it comes to Christ, are we coming or are we going? Are we coming or are we going? It's got to be one of the two. We either be, have to be coming to Jesus each and every day or we're going away from him. And if we are not growing, we are dying. If we're not growing, we become stagnated. It's like a pond that has no water source, that has no renewal of the water and it becomes stagnated, and only plants that choke everything out can exist. And so what we need to remember is, are we, are we coming, are we going to Christ? And if we're not growing, we're dying. There's no fence sitting in all of this. The Lord says, you're either with me or you're against me. He says, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but that person that does the will of God. Because narrow is the way that leads to the Lord, and wide is the way that leads to destruction. I hope that we've garnered something from this message this evening, that it is possible to depart from the Lord. Someone says, be a Christian. It's easy. 
not easy. You wake up every morning and say, this is the day. I am in the moment. I am in the Lord's care. I have to worship the Lord. I have to praise my Lord today. I have to go about doing good. I have to help others. I can't live on what I did yesterday. I have to continue to grow. I have to continue to grow to my last dying breath. I pray that this lesson has been beneficial to each of us and that through it, we may give some thought we may review some of the things that it says in the book of Hebrews about the things that lead to departure from the Lord, especially if we see someone that we care about that we think that might be drifting away. And, and then it's time for us who are spiritual to lift that person back up, to encourage that person. Just like Hebrews chapter 10, 24 tells us, that we are to encourage one another, that we are to stimulate one another toward love and good deeds. I pray that you would uh, take these things to heart as we close in prayer this evening. Would you play, pray with me, please? Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for time that we have had together. We're so grateful that we have been able to meet in this virtual means. I pray that many will listen to this lesson and will we'll gather something from it that will lift them up and pause them to think a little bit. None of us want to think about departing from you, dear God. But if we see those around us, that we see that there is some doubt, it's time for us who are spiritual and strong, to try to lift them up. Be with us through the week, dear Heavenly Father. We have a, a midweek service uh, on Wednesday evening via Zoom. Uh, I pray that uh, maybe you would join that. And if you don't know how, uh, just give us a call and uh, we will put you on that so that you can uh, join us on Wednesday evening. I pray that uh, you would continue to be with us, that you would comfort us, that you would be with us, uh, help us to have the courage of our conviction, to stand in what we believe, and be strong for you. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.